And earlier, we spoke to right-wing Dutch politician Geert Wilders, uh, who is a member of the parliament from Netherlands and who has hailed India's decision to remove Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir. Listen in to his perspective on what could happen next. I saw um, the uh, decision of the Indian government um, to um, uh, revoke the Articles 370 and also 35A. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a, uh, um, even though, of course, it's an Indian uh, um, matter, that um, I believe uh, the Western world should um, support uh, uh, India. Uh, because as uh, your minister, your home minister, Shah, told Parliament uh, before, uh, earlier this week, that uh, democracy was and never fully implemented um, in uh, those regions um, um, uh, when uh, those articles were still in place, that corruption was increased. So I really believe that even, the, and, and we all know that Article 370 was supposed to be only a temporary measure, not a structural one. So um, I think one cannot have a state within a state and that the Indian government decided today that Kashmir and Yamu, the, the two districts, should be um, 100 percent under Indian law is just what every country in the West, every democracy in the West would not accept a country, a state in a state. Um, so um, uh, that's my first reason why I um, strongly uh, support the decision of the Indian government. And the other side is, of course, that and that was what, what was in my tweet, that we saw that the Pakistani government, and not, not only today, but in the last decades, um, they supported um, terrorism all the way. You know, it's, it, it's more state terrorism than anything else, from, from the Pakistani Taliban to Al-Qaeda to even um, forces in Kashmir that fought for the so-called independence. Um, they were meddling in all the issues. So um, it, it, it's not a democracy. So if we in the West should choose, um, uh, we should easily, we have to choose to support. And I hope that a lot of my colleagues and other parliaments in Europe will uh, join me, that we finally speak out and support India um, in that fight for the end of a state within a state, Kashmir. That's what I said, welcome home Kashmir to India. Um, they, the, those people and those regions will develop more under Indian control than today under Article 370, let alone um, under the um, um, influence of the terror regime in uh, Islamabad. So, so this is why I hope and I thought that, well, um, India is a friend and we should support our friends. Now, India's Kashmir decision has led to a desperate response from Pakistan. Two days after India scrapped Article 370, the announcement from Islamabad was an attempt to win the global narrative on Kashmir. The top brass of the Pakistani army and the government went into a huddle. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan summoned a second session of the National Security Committee. This body includes both the political as well as the military leadership of Pakistan. So far, Islamabad has struggled to come up with a coherent response. But now, it has tried to project a serious comeback a major downgrade in the Indo-Pak diplomatic relationship. The decision can be summed up in four broad points. First, of course, is the downgrading of the diplomatic relationship. India's High Commissioner to Pakistan will be sent back, and Pakistan will not send its newly appointed High Commissioner to New Delhi. Islamabad has also suspended all bilateral trade with India. The Imran Khan government has ordered a review of all bilateral arrangements. It has also vowed to raise the Kashmir issue at the United Nations, including the United Nations Security Council. Now, the diplomatic relationship between India and Pakistan is already at an all-time low. The two sides only make news for spats or summons that are issued to each other. There have been no talks for a while now. India remains firm on its position. Talks and terror do not go together. So, a downgrade is meaningless. Next. Pakistan said it will suspend all bilateral trade with India. This all bilateral trade is a pittance of just $2.4 billion. Pakistan's contribution to Indian trade is a grand total of 0.31 percentage, not even a half a percentage. And this was two years ago. Right now, trade is as good as non-existent. It's best suspended, actually. Just for the sake of comparison, India's bilateral trade with Bangladesh stands at $6.5 billion. With Sri Lanka, it's $5 billion. Now, after the Pulwama terror attack, India had imposed hefty tariffs on imports from Pakistan. The most favoured nation's status to Pakistan was also withdrawn. So, not much left to do in the area of bilateral trade. Now, point number three. The United Nations 
Pakistan wants to take the matter to the United Nations Security Council. Pakistan may want to look at the past. Every time it has tried to rake up the Kashmir issue at the United Nations, it has failed. There is little to suggest that this time will be different. Last we checked, nobody had spoken in Pakistan's favor in the first place. Now, there has been no official response from India yet. New Delhi is looking at the big picture. Statements by Home Minister Amit Shah gave some insight into the government's game plan. Jammu and Kashmir, Bharat ka ang hai, abhin ang hai. Iske baare mein koi kanuni ya samvedanik vivad nahi hai. The state of Jammu and Kashmir is and is and shall be an integral in integral part of the union of india is liye aggressive ho ke jammu and kashmir ke pa ko ko aap bharat ka hissa nahi mante ho kya aggressive na ho jaan de denge iske liye kya baat kar rahe ho aap aggressive hone ki kya baat kar rahe ho jaan de denge iske liye pakistan occupied kashmir could be next on the modi government's agenda minister of state for pmo Jitendra Singh said as much in Parliament. He said, and I quote, the next task is how to make Pakistan-occupied Kashmir a part of India. The Indian government has made its policy on Kashmir quite clear during various debates in the Parliament. Amit Shah, the Home Minister, said that India will continue to claim the territories of Jammu and Kashmir that are under Pakistan's occupation. The government will continue to hold a dialogue with the people of Kashmir, but separatist groups like the Hurriyat will not be a part of any conversation. India has the opportunity now to assert its legitimate claim over Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. In fact, Islamabad has been working behind the scenes to bring fundamental changes to that region. Activists have accused Pakistan of uh, changing the demography of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir.